do grays come from, you may ask? Well, let me explain how these values are generated. Meet the unit circle. It's just a circle with a radius of 1. Let's say we input 225 degrees into both our sine and cosine functions. Take note, these functions actually take radians as input. So or as widespread as experience points. But a game's save system is just as important. Saves are part of the bedrock of a game's design. They touch on risk tolerance, experimentation, safety, social factors, quit rates, metagaming, and more. And there are dozens of different flavors that each shape how a game feels. It's time um, to allow the user of the grid to set the items. Um, one thing that you may actually um, see straight away is that we have different ways of um, storing the coordinates, right? So we have the vector to in, we have separate x and Bomber Man gameplay involves strategically placing down bombs, which explode in multiple directions after a certain amount of time, in order to destroy obstacles and kill enemies and other players. This tutorial focuses on implementing tile maps, sprite animations, and even local multiplayer. This is the most fun tutorial. As you can see here, I've got these two singletons here, uh, just audio manager and input manager, and when I'm creating persistent managers that don't ever get destroyed i like to call them systems just to differentiate them a little bit so on my systems i'm going to create an empty input manager and i'll create an audio manager and for some reason you can do that by going to edit project settings player and then in the other settings if you scroll down over here you will have the active input handling you can select the new uh, input system, the old one, or you can also make both work. I think this is starting to look a little bit better, and obviously this is going to be subjective because we're now getting into an artsy side of things, but this looks pretty good. And so those are kind of the main things you'll have to deal with with a trail renderer. You can change the width of it over time, change how long it lasts, change its color. Boom, we got rain. Now, of course, you can kind of modify it any way you like. But let's move on to our snow. So, doing the same thing, we're gonna make a particle system, call it snow. Hey, I wanted to show you guys in a few lines of code how you can take a game from this, where I have three static enemies, to a game like this, where the enemies are always chasing after the player, they're rotating towards its position, and, you know, they're moving after it, and we could tweak the move speed value and things like this. And it doesn't even have to be a player. You could even just give them a random target in the... Let me just go ahead and close that tab down. So here we are now in the... Um the editing environment there's a couple things to be aware of here you've got your normal timeline down here all the various different uh, properties in our world uh, can be controlled over here over time uh, you can bring new entities in the world literally just drag and drop your graphics in to start composing your scene